<laughs> what a story, Mark. Quick and painful this'll be. And welcome to Weird Lines, where we talk about weird lines of playing Gwent that most of the time are going to work out, but sometimes won't because we'll sometimes choose Baby Joseph to laugh at him. So, I, of course, as you all know by now, my children, I'm your dear father, Diffling, and this is one of our favourite people in the world. It is Semper EU, aka Semper EU, aka Chippin Chicken Pear EU, aka the Kiki King himself. How are you doing? One day I will make him talk in the intro. One day it will happen, folks. With all due respect, Drift Dad. Is this Semper plan really going to work out? You tell me, Arthur. Is it? Have some goddamn faith. <laughs> but until that day, I'll continue trying to think of ways to bait him now. In this game, we were playing on stream. This is by far the most interesting game we had in the stream, in my opinion. Uh, basically, we were Kiki Queen. We won round one. We tried to mulligan for Queen. We didn't find her. We mulliganed for Queen round three. We didn't find her. So this is already somewhat into round three. We've played essentially quite kind of standard to this point. Our opponent, as you can see, is playing the... Um, the self wound Engines deck that's been popularized recently by Paja Ball. And, yeah, we are in a difficult situation because we are trying to figure out what we want to use our leader on. So, if we can assume there are two cards stuck in our deck that the Kree could pull. There is a Kiki Queen, and there is a Karen. So, I'm going to let you guys look at... There's also, worth noting, a... Um, what is the name of it? Champion in his graveyard, right? So, that is the game state... So we are going to give you guys a brief moment to think about what you would have done here and let us know in the comments right about now. All right, so we both kind of talk about this one because we had different ideas. Um, you can kind of see me in the top right looking magnificent and debating it with uh, Semper, who we replaced with this wonderful piece of uh, art that I made in the bottom right hand corner there. So the line I was thinking about was basically you play Karen um, from the Decree and you use a combination of leader and Corinthia and debt laughs and you have enough consumes if you play Karen last you can basically try and avoid the Mortvarg and you can give yourself dominance over his biggest unit uh, so that you can then use your future Bargeist procs and that's basically the way you try and win by having all these consumes late on. Um, Semper was arguing for a line where we decree the Kiki Queen and use an also trick a little bit similar to the one we used in the last video, which you, of course, have all watched, and you have all liked, and you've all subscribed, and you're all going to send me presents. Now, when we were looking at this, one of the key things we're thinking about is, okay, one thing I would like to do, and I was talking about when we time it, especially if we're doing the Aussie line, is when are we eating his graveyard, right? Because we have a Yigar in our graveyard and he has the champion in his graveyard. So this is kind of the point at which we need to decide what we're going to do. We have one more turn in theory, so I decide, okay, this is the Aussie turn. We need to play around his Jutta. That's Jutta. His uh, Sig Griffin <laughs> now. Yeah, Sig Griffin now. So this is the turn where we have to Aussie. We actually get an emote out of our opponent uh, for doing it. You know, as a kind of, oh, you've actually played around me. You're not a normal monster player. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so from this point on, I mean, you can talk about the two different lines and, and what you think about them. I mean, I didn't necessarily disagree with the Karen line, but with him not playing, I don't think he played Boar, and I think this was like a, a Paja pile on the, uh, like, on the, <laughs> the, the, the priests, the priests and the Drapple the, I was trying to avoid, <laughs> avoid calling it a pile. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> some um, people would argue Pajet Pile is somewhat disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, 
one thing that's worth pointing out, by the way, when we uh, so we do eventually do the Queen line, and we immediately Osro, right? And Osro looks weird, but you have to think of it as the Thrive Prox rather than the value of the Osro itself, right? Because the biggest thing playing Queen and Osro in the same turn does for us is it saves the Queen from a potential stunning blow. And when you're playing against Skellige and you're playing Kiki Queen, you have to worry about stunning blow. Also, uh, yeah, we, 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 we ignore chat, doesn't exist. We, we, we ignore chat. Um, but yeah. Basically, Igor gets a little shout out. Igor25, hello, thanks for coming to the stream. Uh, yeah, so this guy now has to use his Sigdrifa on a bear, which is obviously uh, you know, six points less than he was hoping for. Uh, so that works out quite nicely for us. Uh, one thing, by the way, I didn't actually say this at the time. Isn't it weird as hell to bleed uh, Corinthia here? Um, it would be, but I don't think... I mean, what else do you bleed, I suppose? But you bleed, I mean, you Aussie, bleed anything you? else, right? No, I don't think you bleed Aussie. But what do you bleed? Because if you bleed a drone, you're missing a point. Maybe if you, you bleed Corinthia, be... you're probably missing a point. Do we just float, actually? You've got Defender, you can just float. True. He doesn't have to do anything. He can just ha res Ooh. the bear and have it sit there. He's not... Like, the two bleeding isn't going to run out anytime soon. You can just sit and wait to see what happens. Maybe he just wasn't bothered about the leader on Corinthia. Maybe he was expecting something else. Hence why he just bled. Something but, that wasn't going on either. But what is he expecting? So we eventually do this, and also I, like a champion, manage not to rope out. So here's the Aussie play. This is the, the weird line we went for. And again, this is because we're playing around the stunning blow on the queen, which would royally screw us if they did it. So here we go, we get the procs on the queen. And bear in mind, the Aussie, yes, it's kind of like a one-point leader plus the thrive plocks. Little plocks? Procs. But it does also secure the queen living, and when you see at the end the amount of points that our insectoids are playing for, that is basically the value of our leader in that scenario. Again, I'm not. I'm still not sure. I'm sitting here. I mean, the maths on it is so weird because the other thing is like, well, okay, there's a lot of Yurdens around right now, so there's an yeah. argument. That the Karen line kind of plays around here, but they always have Morkvarg. This is the thing. You know they almost certainly have Morkvarg, but you don't know if they have Yordan, and even if they have Yordan, I'm not really sure any line of play we can come up with here beats Yordan, right? Mm, yeah, I think we just lose too many points altogether. Yeah. I mean, Jordan, I'd have to really sit down and do the math on that one. Yeah, I think Yordan kind of screws us. I mean, we really... <laughs> Because this is the thing, folks, there's a lot of maths in this if you want to really do it. Because if you look at that priest, it's already at 17. So when you're playing, what, well, leader and Karen, if you go that line, you if you're playing last play to try and avoid mor getting Mortfarged, and when I say getting av avoid getting Mortfarged, you also have an Osril and you have a Beast here, who are both rather juicy Mortfarg targets. Um, as I believe his last play is to play the Mortfarg on the, on the Osril, if I'm not mistaken, or I might do it now. No, so there's the stunning blow. He stunning blows his own Draco, which is, um... I feel a bit oh, odd. Maybe it's mathematically correct. I haven't played Draco Turtle and New Draco Turtle enough to actually know whether that's better than just hitting something of ours. Um... But yeah, uh, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's actually a better stunning blow on our side, to be honest. Yeah, it's... Everything <laughs> box thrive, right? So, it makes it thrive easier, I should say. Yeah, so even... I mean, I suppose there's... Is, uh, there's not really an argument for killing a drone, is there? Because there's not enough turns for us to proc. Like, the drone's only going to be four anyway, so... If it was oh, yeah. earlier in the round, you could argue killing a drone, but... As in, if we had more turns of thriving left of the queens. Or if you had more queens. But if you have more queens, you're almost always killing a queen anyway with a stunning blow. It's hard to keep them all out of stunning blow range. In fact, it's pretty much impossible. See, again, if our opponent mock back to the Osral, then it changes our game plan completely, right? Yeah. Yeah, if he'd marked the Osral earlier, then we probably had to go to the Karen line, we're probably forced into it. Well, we were, because we were not we were never laying Queen front row there if we didn't have the Aussie play, right? That was yeah. just never gonna be a thing. So yeah, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um so you know, shouts out to my opponent, but mainly shouts out to me, because I won. Uh, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> this is I'm just a fucking <laughs> I'm just the jester in the in the the pro team chat. Honestly, I, I just try and make people laugh. So, 
Uh, that is the video. This is our weird play we came out with. So we would like to know, did you guys see this line? Do you guys prefer the Karen line? Is there, you know, does anyone think they have a definitive answer to which line is better and why? I'd be really interested in that because we're both sitting here going, well, there's pros and cons to both. And it's especially bearing in mind we're on a timer. We've missed our queen. We're going, oh, God, what are we doing? And we're trying to figure it out in the moment. So, you know, do bear that in mind. But yes, this is what we ended up doing. We did just about squeeze a win out of the game. So I feel pretty good about that, especially playing around the stunning blow that the opponent did indeed have. Uh, that felt pretty good. So yeah, did you guys find the line? Is there a better line we didn't even talk about? Should we rename this to Drift Gang? Because frankly, it's all about me. Let's be totally honest about that. With that being said, I'm Driftling. This has been Semper EU, and we will see you guys in the next video.